You are a smelly pirate hooker. Frank, I bet she smells like the floor of the kitchen in my old fraternity. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. Okay, it's study time, everybody. I feel like, you know, I don't do enough educating. You know, I got this PhD and I never use it for anything. And I use it for evil, not for good. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time that I started like, you know, saying smart things once in a while, at least finding a study or two and... Telling it sounds boring right from the beginning, like oh, she's going to talk about a study. But these are here's the best thing: these are studies that defy logic. They're everything that you think. These are the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know how you and I are always talking about how I never shower. <laughs> <sighs> yes, you shower three times a week, and that's under protest. Yeah, and in the winter, like three times a week is a lot. <laughs> It's cold, (laughs) like being wet in the cold. But the shower warms you up, though. That's the thing. The shower is warmer than outside the shower. When you're in the shower, it's warm. But when you get out, you're wet and it's cold. And if you have long... That's when you dry dry off the minute you get out of the shower, then you're not cold for more than, I don't know, five seconds. Not true. If you have long hair, it takes a long time for your hair to dry. And then you're cold the entire time because your hair is wet. It's not fun. Has somebody actually watched you take a shower and get out of the shower <laughs> and and wrap your hair up and do all that? Has somebody ever seen this happen? My boyfriend's probably seen it once or twice. <laughs> because I guarantee there's problems. <laughs> there's issues <laughs> where somebody would go, that's not the way you do it, Cooper. I don't think that's right. But just having wet hair, if your hair is wet and it's freezing cold, you can't get warm because you're wet. But you can wrap the the hair up in a towel and it never (laughs) touches your body. Uh Uh-huh. But see, you don't understand. Once your hair is wet, your head is wet. Your head's still wet. and You're doing something wrong. Yeah, that's all I know is there's a step that you're totally missing <laughs> that you're not doing right. And it's it's the whole problem with your cleanliness. Even if I have a towel wrapped around my head, which I do, it still doesn't stop your hair from being wet. It just stops it from dripping on your body. But your head is still wet. And if it's cold, you're wet. You know how you have a sleep study where people watch you sleep and they tell you what you're doing wrong? <laughs> You need a shower study to where people can watch you take a shower and tell you what you're doing wrong. All right. Can I, can I get back to my study, yes, please? Yes, go back to okay. your study. So you just gave a whole argument of why you're fat, basically, because this new study found that if you take a lot of showers, you're more likely to be heavier and fat. Yes. Let me tell you something. I'm not eating the water. <laughs> I'm not eating the soap and the shampoo when I'm in there. It has not, I guarantee I don't gain a pound in the shower. Okay. Even if, okay, just eating eating water does not make you gain weight. Water is actually good for you. You should be drinking a lot of it. Okay. No, researchers just found that you, things you use in the shower that are plastic containers like your body wash, your shampoo bottle, your conditioner, um, some people's uh, loofah, whatever, you know, those plastic loofahs, whatever. Mm-hmm. They have identified 11 chemicals in common plastic products that contribute to weight gain because they impair your metabolism. Mm-hmm. Plastic containers do that. They said specifically the types of plastic that them. are- Then you'll be fine. Just because you're near them, you, you gain weight, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, having them in your hand, two things. Having them in your hand and also the shampoo that's in there. The shampoo is absorbing the chemicals of the plastic. So when you put the chemicals on your head and you soap up, you are soaping up with chemicals that cease or slow down your metabolism. This is why I am thin and you are fat. (laughs) It's because I wash my hair. That's the reason why I'm fat. You shower too much. Yes. And you know what? You don't use soap. I use soap. You use body wash. So that's even more plastic. Okay. So it's the plastic fault. And I drink milk and milk comes out of a plastic container. And then I drink Kool-Aid and Kool-Aid comes out of a plastic container. Everything has plastic. Right. And that's contributing to your slower metabolism. 
according to this study. So it's plastic's fault. It's not Twinkie fault. It's plastic's nope, fault. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, your problem is not the box of Twinkies you ate. It's the fact that you showered and conditioned your hair after you shampooed. That's the problem. You have a Google alert for reasons <laughs> not to shower. <laughs> you just try to make things up all the time. And as long as you get a Google alert and said, this is a good reason not to shower, then you just put that in your head. Well, like I said, the studies I'm telling you about kind of defy logic. And that's the first one, that you should not shower that much okay. because your shower is making you fat, period. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. I don't need any more convincing, but now I'm even more convinced. <laughs> 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 now I will shower once a week. <sighs> okay, here here's another study that defies logic. You know when you're dating – and like you go on a date with somebody and you really like them and your friends are like, no, three, three day rule. You got to wait, play hard to get. And then a, a bunch of like younger millennials and Gen Z came through and said like, hey, no, you, you got to be honest. You got to be like, no, I'm into you. Let's go out again. And you got to just be like who you are right up front. Mm. Uh, no, uh -uh, don't do that. This new study finds that playing hard to get is actually good. It's a good thing to do and that you're more likely to have a more successful relationship and you're more, more likely to get the person you really want if you play hard to get. And there's two main reasons. So the study found that playing hard to get, remember, any study that we talk about, you got to go back to the cave. Like what is it in our DNA that is deep, deep, deep in our DNA that, ma that makes us who we are. <laughs> well, not plastic. Remember, that's why you look at pictures of cavemen and they're all in mm. great shape. Mm. There, were, there were no obese cavemen. There was no plastic. Okay. I mean, yeah, forget about the fact they were running from food, <laughs> running for food, <laughs> and running to not become food. That right. wasn't it. It was the fact that there was no plastic. Anyway, so purposely acting cold or even a little mean or disinterested does work. It doesn't make sense, but that's human nature in a nutshell, okay? This is, this is why the new study from the University of Rochester said that playing hard to get increases what they call a perceived desirability. Mm -hmm. Okay, that means that you are somebody that appears more in demand. So you go on a date with a girl, right? And you really like her, but you don't call her for a few days. She assumes it's because you're dating other women and you're very you're really in demand when the truth is you're home playing video games just trying to play it cool. You know what I mean? I believe that 300%. The girls that I treated like crap when I was dating, you couldn't get rid of them. Mm-hmm. So uh -huh. it, it comes down to the whole cow and milk thing. So <laughs> <laughs> don't give it up. If if they gave it up on the first date, I'm not calling them back. It's not about giving it up. Sex has nothing to do with this. If you have sex on the first date and then you don't call somebody for like a week or a few days, it's this still works that if you – so let's say I have sex with a guy and then call him the next day. Mm -hmm. it makes me It makes me look desperate. If I have sex with a guy – and don't call him or call him like a week later, it makes me look like I am much more valuable, much more appealing because, yeah, I had sex with you, but pfft, it didn't mean anything to me. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. And the last study that kind of defies logic. Now, we've been hearing about that as soon as you turn 40, you really need to up your exercise. You got to add weights. You got to do everything to fight that your natural body uh, desire to gain weight and lose muscle mass and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff? No. A brand new study published in the Journal of American Medical Association, which is JAMA, J-M-A, is a really, really huge journal. This is, like, this is like the Bible for doctors. What they found is that you're over 40. If you add just 10 minutes of moderate exercise, moderate to vigorous, but moderate's fine, to your normal everyday routine, you have a much less likely chance of dying young. If I added 10 minutes to my regular uh, workout plan now, I would be uh, totally in shape. 
because that would mean <laughs> <laughs> I go from nothing to 10 minutes. <laughs> so I think 10 minutes is better than nothing. No, and that's what the study's finding, because I think a lot of people are like, ugh, like if I can't work out for an hour, what's the point? Mm-hmm. And they don't do anything. This study says, no, get on a bike, go for a run. 10 minutes is better than nothing. So it's really important to do, if you're over 40, really important to do 10 minutes. It can literally save your life. And I will tell you, if you go to a therapist to talk about why you're not going to the gym, one of the pieces of advice they give you is they say, okay, one day just put gym clothes on. You don't have to go to the gym. Just put gym clothes on. Okay, next day, put gym clothes on and go to the gym. You don't have to get on a bicycle. Don't do it. Just show up at the gym and then go home. The third day, just go get on a bicycle, pedal, don't pedal, you know, and then the fourth day, just do like 10 minutes. Put the clothes on, go to the gym, do 10 minutes. So each day, you know, Mm. they do like a desensitization thing where they kind of get you eventually just to go and do, little, you know, little by little, piece by piece. But the truth is the minute you put workout clothes on, you're going to work out. The minute you go to the gym, you're going to do something. So even though the therapist will tell you, just show up, they know that when you get there, you're going to do something. What I'm telling you is this study says, don't put the pressure on yourself to have to go to a gym and work out for hours. Go run for 10 minutes, get back in your car, go home. That will save your life. On which day, first, second, or third, or fourth day, do I get COVID and die? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to live longer because I'm going to work out for 10 minutes, but you totally forgot. It's COVID time, and COVID lives at the gym. (laughs) Well, okay, I guess I mean non-COVID times, yeah. But so if you get a treadmill or a bike or something at your home... Or even if you just go for a run, put your sneakers on, go for a run for 10 minutes, run five minutes away from your house, and then just come home, run home. I, I can go walk. My first day, I'll walk past my elliptical. On the second day, <laughs> I'll take my suit coats <laughs> off the elliptical. <laughs> <laughs> On the third day, I'll take the pants off the elliptical. <laughs> yeah. That's how it's going to work. <laughs> Do it again. It's the Cooper and Anthony show. TikTok has this thing going on right now where you go outside and you record the outside of your house or where you live and you hashtag where you live. That sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you tell people where you live so they could find you and murder you? No, not your house. I'm talking about like your town. Like, this is my town. Hashtag Switzerland. Okay, got it. And people can go, oh, look at how great. I guess some uh, chamber of commerce came up with this shit. I don't know. So a guy walks outside in Switzerland. Beautiful view. So he's got the he's got the mountains and the snow and all that. And you look at it and it looks just like a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. So he hashtags Gastonia. (laughs) (laughs) And if you don't know, Gastonia is a small town that I used to live in, in North Carolina. That's a shithole. (laughs) Shithole. (laughs) (laughs) Like a big time shithole. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. So people now are going to Gastonia looking for these mountains. Those who live here know this isn't here. <laughs> that wouldn't even be up in uh, Boone, no. No, that ain't Gastonia. No, no, that's nothing like it. <laughs> Gastonia, North Carolina. But a TikTok post claiming snow-capped mountains in Switzerland were actually Gastonia led one Florida woman on a detour she'll never live down. Me and my husband and his family were driving up to Boone because his mom had never seen snow. In the car, Olivia Garcia came across this video on TikTok. I was like, oh my God, this looks so cool. We have to go here. I showed everyone, they're like, okay, let's go. It was an hour out of the way. But when they arrived, this is what she saw. Everyone in the car was like, did you not Google search this? And I was like, I didn't think about it. I was just like scrolling on TikTok. I'm like, oh, we should go here. And they asked what the name of the place was. And I'm like, Gastonia, they routed it. And we went and I just kept scrolling. Gastonia, North Carolina is beautiful. Put that in the, the GPS right now. Oh, we're 30 minutes away from there. You we do should realize go. that. She, yeah, she started in Florida. That should tell you everything <laughs> you need to know about her. <laughs> Nothing close to that. It is 
a shithole. I love that she allowed some random TikTok video to decide her vacation plans and where she was going. Like, you do no research on your own whatsoever. It's like, well, TikTok said. Yeah, it's with the the hashtag Estonia. So everything. (laughs) Also in the news, there is Goldie the Pufferfish. Uh Uh-huh. He had emergency dental work. So (laughs) the person that owned this Pufferfish noticed that. The puffer fish was not eating. Why? Because his teeth are too big. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> so here's here's uh, the puffer fish. Look at his teeth. Yeah, his teeth are pretty big. So it's a giant. <laughs> it looks it looks like fake teeth. It looks. Like, you know what it looks like? It looks like um. You know, in Halloween and Halloween that you put on like those um those fake teeth, the fake like uh, vampire teeth. Right. That's what it looks, looks like. One of those like cartoon plastic teeth somebody put in that fish. It's the feet that ta- that walk to go. That's what the fish has in its mouth. Those teeth. Those teeth that walk. Yeah. The teeth that walk. Yeah. So, sixty-four year old Mark Bryant noticed his fish wasn't eating. His fish had really big teeth, so he wrapped the fish up, took it to the to the the the, the guy, and said, "Can you can you fix his teeth?" And. Did the doctor fix the fish's teeth? The doctor put the fish under, fixed the teeth. <laughs> now, now Goldie is doing much better, and the the puffer fish can eat. So, my question is: At what point do you say, hey, "Goldie's got to die"? It's a fish. Well, I mean, it's it's not like you're not. It, it's not plastic surgery. I mean, you're not having like a, a nose and breast put on the fish. I mean, you're having, a, it's a little bit of shaving on the teeth. How much could it possibly cost? When do you say it's a fish? <laughs> it's time to go down the toilet because uh, it's a fish. No, that's his pet. He gave it a name. It's Goldie. <laughs> that's a name. You know, I, I love people like that, that care so much for creatures and beings that they're willing to spend their hard-earned money to make their make the lives of these animals and creatures better. I love people like that. She responded well. There was no stress at all. Within five minutes, she was able to swim around the water. And within 10 minutes, she was happy swimming around oh. and eating within two hours. Oh, see? He made her life better. But I, I can imagine Goldie. how much... How much is it to work on the teeth of a fish? I don't think they even have that in the price booklet. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Fish teeth. No, it's not in here. I I don't know. How how do you come up with that price to, to, to charge this guy? I love that there. So, is it a vet that does dental work or a dentist that does fish work? <laughs> Which is it? <laughs> <laughs> he used a tool made from a diamond for cutting bone or teeth. He had oh. to break. He had to saw some of her teeth off. Oh, poor little girl! But look, she's okay now. Hour mm. long procedure. <laughs> Hour long on the fish. Give the fish up. Let the fish go. <laughs> it's had a good life. Let Do you it think, go. Like, Twenty minutes in, the vet was like, "What the fuck am I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what? We're getting seventy five hundred bucks to do this fish te- fish's teeth. <laughs> Hour surgery. That ain't cheap. Well, I have a bigger question. How do they know the fish is a girl? Cooper, I hate to tell you, there if you it didn't have a wiener. No, but fish don't have wieners or not wieners. I mean, I think they're they're just like birds, where everything's on the inside. You can't see if a fish is a f- male or female, it's right? A puffer fish. When he goes <laughs> like that, then his wiener pops out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call them puffer fish. <laughs> But, you know, it's funny. I thought that birds were like, or fish were like birds in the way that, like, their colors, like, the, you know, how, like, peacocks have those big giant feathers, uh. and those are usually the males, and then the peahens, the ugly ones are the girls. I thought that that was the same thing, but apparently, I've got a friend who who is a bird person and was telling me that actually with birds and fish, it's not always true. The genitalia is on the inside, and it's not until they lay an egg that you realize that your male bird or fish is a female you know i wonder how many animals people say are male and female they have no idea 
<laughs> it's like alligators. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a female. How do, how do you know? I don't know. How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> you, you roll it over and check. I don't I don't know how you. You can't even check. It's not even there. Nothing to see. A frog. How do you tell which a frog is? I. You probably can't see on a frog either. Right. So I don't know. So you got to name it something. So he named it Goldie. I think you name it something more generic and neutral. You know, like Chris. Chris. <laughs> Just call it, <laughs> call it could, Chris. Could be uh, uh, or Pat. There you go. Oysters have something in common with you. Me? They don't you, shower? No, they get herpes. <laughs> I don't have herpes. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> Oh, that's just what I've heard. <laughs> I don't have herpes. In fact, I was just tested for it, and I don't have herpes. Why would you be tested for that? Because I have this new, this is weird. I have this new gynecologist. She's really thorough. They test all this stuff. They tested me for diabetes at my gynecologist. Diabetes. They test for everything there. I didn't have diabetes, and I don't have herpes. Like, they went through, they were testing me for stuff that, like, Everything like stuff that I was like, do, do, should I be worried? Like my prostate? I don't have a prostate. <laughs> like, well, you can't test my prostate, can you? Diabetes. Well, you haven't had weird. sex with anybody in fifteen years. That's not your boyfriend. That's true. Yeah, so, that's a good point. So they said we're going to test you for herpes, and you went, "Oh, okay." Well, maybe I, you know, I could have gotten herpes before him and just didn't know about it all these years. So I think it's important to get tested for. I never even cons- I never even thought about it because I thought when you have herpes, like something happens where you go, oh, I wonder what this is. Maybe it's herpes. <laughs> I-, I never I never had a symptom of any kind that I thought right. I should be tested for herpes. But the doctor was like, no, you could have herpes and not know about it. I was like, I think I know about it by now. So she's like, well, we test for everything here. I was like, all right, go for it. Test, test me for it. So yeah. HPV but, check, herpes H- check, COVID HPV, check. HPV, exactly. They test you for everything. Even like a gynecologist testing you for diabetes. I thought that was really interesting. Diabetes. So no, I don't have anything. You said I need to be checked for all these things because I think after going on Google, I have all these things. Yeah, test me for SIDS, all of it. Get it in there. <laughs> so anyway, oysters now are getting herpes because of something in the water so, and what about if you eat an oyster that has herpes? Can you get herpes? See, that's the thing. So, you you can say, I got it, honey, I got it from an oyster. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here's the study. It's actually been published. Look, oysters get herpes. That's where I got it from. <laughs> <laughs> and how'd you get chlamydia? Uh, <laughs> that's from squid. <laughs> Read this. <laughs> and I got crabs from crabs. <laughs> In, exa- where else do you get crabs from? <laughs> but not all oysters die of herpes. <laughs> <laughs> and babe, <laughs> and babe, how'd you get pregnant? Sushi. <laughs> I just love that. Oysters, they don't die from it. They just live with it forever. So it's kind of like. <laughs> yeah. They get cold sores, I guess, and the virus, and then you eat it, and that's where you can get it from. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Just so you know, it's not that common. It doesn't happen to every guy, and it is a big deal. I knew it. It's the Cooper and Anthony Show. All right, well, here are a list of the top 10 things you should never Google. And oh. I know that, yeah. What, what, what's the last thing you Googled? Last thing I Googled, I Googled Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> How lazy is that? That's pretty funny. I Googled Cooper and Anthony on Spotify. Uh-huh. So I, I Googled that. I Heart Radio, Cooper and Anthony. I Googled that. I Googled Reddit. So instead of going <laughs> to Reddit, go- <laughs> <laughs> instead of going to Reddit, I Googled Reddit. Well, you'll be happy to hear what I Googled today. Oh, no. 
on behalf of you. No, I Googled this for you. I've got to tell you. I Googled Harley Davidson because they have eight new bikes and I was excited to see them so I can talk to you about them. But when I looked at them, I was like, I don't understand anything I'm looking at. So I didn't even bother. <laughs> but I was all excited. I was like, oh, great. This is good. I'm going to Google this and talk to him about it. But then I was like, yeah, this is there's nothing. <laughs> there's, there's nothing here. I can't. Yeah, there's an um, electric bike that's coming out that they've been they've been talking about. There's there's nothing that I'm interested in. Yeah, um, I googled about that uh, Jenny, what's her face from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Because after she got fired, I was like, well, what did she tweet? Because I I'm not, I don't really watch the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, so I didn't really I remotely follow that story, but didn't really pay attention to it, you know. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, well, they fired her. They never fire people, so I had to find out what she posted and it was it was pretty bad um i also googled uh alicia witt the actress from the walking dead because i was like well what else has she been in because i know i know her from before the walking dead you saw her parents Mm. died they froze to death um she tried she kept trying to help them but they refused her help so um i was like well and i was reading the story like oh this is really really sad and i was like what else has she been in (laughs) <laughs> um, because I was trying, no, because I was trying to explain to my boyfriend. He's like, I don't know who that is. I was like, Walking Dead. He's like, we don't watch The Walking Dead anymore. And nobody I'm like, does. Yeah, I was like, but you've seen her. I swear you've seen her. He's like, well, what's she been in? I'm like, I don't know. Something, some show from the 80s or 90s or uh, she was in Friday Night Lights. Oh, screw it. I'll Google it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, let me just Google it and find out what she was in. Um, but I guess she's she was in Justified. She was Wendy crow and justified which is how i know her yeah i don't yeah i don't remember that i googled the new show somebody somewhere that's on hbo okay because i i saw the first two episodes and i Uh can't believe anybody anybody with eyes would actually ever watch (laughs) this show it has got to be the worst show ever on tv and rotten tomatoes gave it like 98 percent, and i couldn't believe it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is a step up from a YouTube this show with a, on a webcam. Right, right. It was that bad. It's so bad. Um, okay, so here are some of the things that you should never Google. Okay. Don't don't Google your symptoms because they say that no, no, I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you Google your symptoms, the problem is you will find things that are not gonna help you. You know, it's gonna make you feel worse and panicked. So don't ask Dr. Google for anything because Google won't give you accurate information. So either go to WebMD or the Mayo Clinic or just call your doctor. Um, They say don't Google anything criminal like how to make a bomb, how to make amphetamines. Don't do that. (laughs) Yeah, don't do that because here's why. Now that's attached to your IP address and it can come up in another database that has nothing to do with you and you can get in trouble because you were curious. How about if you do it in incognito mode? Can that still uh, come back to you? As long as it's your IP address, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Right. Uh, they said don't Google cancer for the same reason, because most people, like, some, you'll have a little symptom, and then you'll Google cancer. You'll be like, that's it, I have cancer. So the same <laughs> thing with, you know, don't Google symptoms. Um, don't Google bed bug infestations, because the photos that come up are disgusting. Oh, yeah, you would never sleep in a bed again. Yeah, same thing with skin conditions. If you see some of the pictures that come up, you will never, you'll want to, like, rip your own eyes out. Um, same thing with, they say, smoker's lungs, dangerous animals, that kind of stuff. Don't Google anything like that. Uh, don't Google your name. Now, it's not a big secret that your privacy is out there, like you don't have a lot of privacy, mm-hmm. but you might be surprised at some of the stuff that comes up if you Google your own name and it's going to make you really depressed because you can't really do much about it. You know, just just don't don't Google yourself because you might s- stumble upon some unpleasant results and then it upsets. Yeah, don't Google your email address, right? Because you right. can only imagine what comes up. Just be safe and step away. Yeah, step. Don't Google anything to do with you. Um, and the number one thing not to Google: giving birth. Okay, <laughs> we've all seen the scenes in the movies: women who are yelling loud, doctors are saying, "Calm down." It looks stressful, even in the movie. But the real process of giving birth is 
a lot more disturbing and especially dangerous for women to watch because it can discourage them from having children. So don't even, don't search it. Don't search cesarean. <laughs> Nothing to do with having babies. They say that is the one number one thing. I mean, I don't care. I was never going to have kids, so I can Google all of that as much as I want. Yeah, I mean, just <laughs> thinking about it, a 10-pound baby coming out of that. If you ever have any kind of procedure done, they put you under with anesthesia. You don't know what's going on. You're out. They mm-hmm. can do whatever they want to you. But if you actually saw what they were doing to you, you would be horrified and you'd never stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> a journey back in time. The Cooper and Anthony Show. Oh, that takes me back. So why don't we just try it, okay? And not worry about what plants crave. Rondo's got what plants crave. Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they used to make Brondo. Yeah, but why do they use them to make Brondo? Because Brondo got electrolytes. Okay. Um. So I want to tell you guys a story about this uh, trash guy. Trash guy. Yeah, this is really amazing. Oscar the Grouch? No, no, not oh. him. What, what kind of story? Well, Is it uh, in a book? No. Should we not- sit down? <laughs> yeah. Once upon a time, <laughs> okay. Once upon a time, there was an old guy who um, had a hundred tons of trash in his house. No, taken out of his 100 house. Hundred tons. A hundred tons. That's like two hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> How many pounds is that? There's two thousand pounds in a ton, so you do the math. One hundred tons of bric-a-brac is what they called it. Bric-a-brac. Bric-a-brac. I guess because you know, you know, when when there's that much stuff piled on top of that much stuff, you know, what I mean, you can't you can't even decipher what it is. I think there's a chair in there. I think there's they just called it brick a brick a brac is just like we don't know what it is. It's just a pile of stuff. We're not quite sure. Right. And if you look through it, you see like there's a drill in there. There's um, let's see, some sandwiches, some light bulbs. There's just so much stuff that you just go brick a brac because you don't even know what to call it. <laughs> but have you ever been to anyone's house? Do you ever walk into someone's house or or place of business and you go, oh my God, this place is a dump. This is the messiest place I've ever seen. Like you don't realize how people live until you walk into their house and you're like, this is gross. Because out in the street, they seem normal. They wear normal clothes. They don't smell bad. They don't look like people who live like that. But then all of a sudden, you you go to their house and and it's a dumpster. It's I mean it's an absolute dump. A lot Have of you times, had that like, experience? yeah, a lot of times people like that they don't they won't let you come over. I wonder if they even realize it. Yeah. Or they have like one or two rooms that are fine. Then you open that one room and it's like, ah. <laughs> well, I think everybody has that one room or one <laughs> yeah. closet or one drawer or something. That, so who do you yeah. know that's had the messiest place ever? 8776 Cooper. What's the messiest place you've ever experienced on your own? You walked in and thought this. I can't believe this. Yeah. How do you live like this? I mean, Sean has these friends in Memphis that I won't go see. Like he, they've been saying, oh, come down and visit. Come down and visit. But the reason I won't go is because Sean told me they have a spaghetti wall. Ooh. And they don't clean it. Like they find out if the spaghetti's done and throw it up against the wall? Yes. And they leave it there. And Sean said there's food everywhere. They, For some reason, they don't have, like the clothes are not on the floor. You know, they'll clean up after the cat. The cat's litter box is immaculate. But the kitchen is disgusting. There's something about, the, either they have no, uh, what is it, the adenoids, whatever it is in your nose that you don't smell. Right. That nothing, you know, you can't smell. Mm-hmm. He said, you walk into their kitchen, and there's just food everywhere and rotting food, and there's this spaghetti wall, and it's so gross. Living room, immaculate. You can walk into the living room and sit down and hang out, and you're like, what's that smell? Go into the kitchen. It's gross. It's gross. Mm. So do you have somebody like that? Do you know anyone like that that, that you know, they seem like they're perfectly clean and normal, but you walk into their place, and it's just a mess? 8776 Cooper. Hi, Heather. Hi, Cooper. How are you? Now, Heather, who in your life fits this description? Oh, I am um, my best friend. I went to go live with her. I was having a fall with my parents, mm-hmm. and I went to go live with her. And you walk into their house, and there's just crap all over the counters. They have a bonus room that used to have a pool table. It was like the laundry room because all of their laundry was sitting in there. You had to step over stuff just so you know you. <clears throat> I don't know. It's just crud everywhere. I didn't even know what the carpet looked like. <laughs> Wow. And then, you know, they would have, like, birthday parties for her brother, and we would have, like, clean up, because she would actually have people over, mm-hmm. and we'd spend the entire day before cleaning up. And, and I just couldn't believe it. And are they unaware of it? 
oh, I, they're aware of it, but I guess they just don't want to do anything about it. I mean, I'm talking stacks of dishes <gasps> were from like two weeks ago. Or the meal that they had two weeks ago still sitting on the stove. How do they not have bugs everywhere? I don't know. I was so worried I'd wake up in the middle of the night with, like, bugs or vermin crawling on me. <laughs> vermin. <laughs> oh. I mean, is that vermin I, on me? Yes. I mean, it was just, and, and the kids' room is just the same with, like, their clothes all over the place and toys. And after a while, I was like, how do you people live like this? And what'd they say? Uh, she really, her mom didn't have an answer. And I asked my friend, and she goes, Mom just doesn't like to clean up. I mean, it's unsanitary. I mean, it's, it, the fact that there are kids there. Yeah, well, I mean, like, you know, me and her, we're about three years apart. So I was 18 at the time. She was 15. Her brother was maybe 10, maybe. And, yeah. you know, I was just, but still, I mean, it's just with the, and the bathroom was nasty, too. Like, the bathroom, that's one thing I hate is for my bathroom to be dirty. Yeah, because that's where you go to clean yourself. It yeah, has to be and spotless. It, it would have mildew all over the place. Yeah. And the toilet would be nasty. It was just disgusting. And, you know, it's one thing if it's one person, but the fact that it was a couple and they both didn't, like, nobody said to the other one, we should clean. Yeah. Well, and then not to mention the dogs would, you know, get into the trash and string it all around the house. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I can't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Heather. Hey, Kit. Hey, how are you? Now, Kit, who in your, oh, sorry. Yeah, of course, he's got to play that for you. Um, so who in your life is just the messiest person ever? It's my sister-in-law. Really? Now, is your husband, is, is, no, sister is your husband's sister? Yes, it is. And he, um, we went to her house. She lives on a farm. And it was a big old, really, from the outside, a really nice farmhouse. And he did not warn me, and I hate him to this day for this. <laughs> but we walked in the front door, and it was like, what the last caller just said, it was the same kind of thing. It was just so trashed. The dishes were piling everywhere with dried up spaghetti on them. <sighs> they had a ham in the corner, just like a ham with a bone in it and everything. And I was like, what in the world? And they're like, oh, it's curing. I'm like, it's curing? <laughs> oh. It was disgusting. Who's going to eat couch. that? I know. That's what I said. We sat on the couch, and you fell literally through the couch to the floor. <gasps> now, now, he didn't grow up like this, right? No, no. So this is no, something I, the sister ca- came to on her own? Yeah, I guess so, because it was his mother's house wasn't like that. I mean, it's dusty, but it was nothing like this. And there's just dogs, like farm dogs everywhere. Just messy, like laundry filling down the stairs. You can't even get up the stairs. There was just so much laundry. I, I was I was frightened to touch anything. How long did you have to stay there for? It was it was just a visit for an afternoon. It was, I was I was like I need to leave now and, and never come back again ever. Never ever. I've never been back. <laughs> and it's amazing that your husband wouldn't warn you because that's the kind of thing that you say to somebody. Look, I'm just telling you when you walk in, it's going to be quite a dump. Oh, he said nothing. Did he not know? Oh, he knew. He knew because he spent a lot of time there growing up, but it was just, oh, it's horrifying. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess you know what you're having for Thanksgiving, that ham. That ham's coming over. It's curing. It's, it, it's going to take some time. It'll be ready by Thanksgiving, Kit. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so who do you know that just has the messiest place ever? Like, you can't even believe how gross and disgusting people live. Hey, Kevin. How's it going, Cooper? Okay, so Kevin, who in your life is a, just a messy, crazy, messy pl- person? A guy I work with. He uh, he's got four Great Danes, mm-hmm. and two of them are adult size. And anyways, the other two are still considered puppies, but they're they're pretty huge. Yeah. And uh, his house his house is just full of dog hair. He's got a big, huge kennel in the middle of his kitchen. No, <laughs> right in the middle oh, of the yeah. kitchen. Oh. Yeah, right in the kitchen. And he's got he's got a wife and two daughters. And uh, anyways, one time I went there, and uh, before I asked to use the washroom or whatever, and before I went to go, she said, oh, just don't look down on the floor. Oh, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went in the washroom, and here there's tampons all over the floor in the bathroom. Oh, and gross. Yeah, yeah, they're used. And and I was like, what the oh. hell? And they're like, they're like, oh, the dogs, they take them out. And then I, oh, I just, it just absolutely, terribly, unbelievably <sighs> disgusting. And the fact that he blames the dogs as if the dogs are supposed to clean them back up afterwards. Yeah, as if it's their fault that they're going to dig in the trash and take out this stuff. But right. right, it's like put your trash can in a place where the dogs can't get to it. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just amazing how gross it is. And I don't know if you've ever seen a Great Dane, but they're almost like the head on their adult is almost to my chest, and I'm six feet tall. And uh, their tails, they just go around 
wagging their tails and they knock everything. They knock like they were, we were eating supper one time and they knocked my glass off the table because their tails are right there. It's right. Just, I don't know. I don't think that's. Uh, I think that's pretty disgusting when you let animals control your house. Exactly. I mean, the thing is, and I have a friend that has three Great Danes, and you'd walk in there, you'd never know it. Wow. You would never know that she has th- three Great Danes, and a you'd never know it because. But I gotta tell you, she's very careful about cleaning up, and they're really well trained. It's not about. It's you can't blame the dogs. And their poo is about the size of Cooper. Oh, pff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted a Great Dane, and Charlie said, "No way," because I am not cleaning up that poo. <laughs> There's no way I'm cleaning up that poo. You can't. You couldn't have a a, a scooper. You'd have to have a shovel. You could ride a Great Dane. Yeah. They should like wear underwear. They should wear underwear in public. <laughs> Those Great Danes. Really? It's just yeah. Oh, it's atrocious. Hi, Hannah. Hi. Now, Hannah, who do you know that is perfectly normal, perfectly nice, but the place where they live is disgusting? My girlfriend Shauna. We've been friends for like twelve years, and we lived together before. And I knew that she didn't clean like you know to my standards. Yeah. But I went to. I came to visit her about a month or so ago, and I stayed at her house a couple nights, and. She's like, normal stuff, nothing stays on hangers, everything in the closet's on the floor, mm-hmm. clothes piled up, things going sour, the sink smells like something's growing in it. Ugh. But what topped it off and made me, like, really say, okay, I can't come back, like, her toilet had overflowed, but her, her both of her, her, my son and her son, had been going to the bathroom in the toilet, like, overnight. <gasps> no oh, no. No toilet paper, no nothing. So it overflows, but she proceeds to take towels that you clean your body with and wipe your body with and... Lay them on the floor. It's she- overflow. There's poop and pee and everything else on the floor. In an apartment, it's seeping into the carpet. She just takes the towels, lays it over top of them, leaves <gasps> it all day long, waits for her daughter to come home, makes her daughter clean it up. Oh. Her daughter takes the towels, puts them in the washing machine, and puts them on a rent cycle. Oh. they were forgotten about. And they were left in there for like five days. And I finally was like, Shauna, what does that smell? She was like, oh, it must be those towels. She did not even so much as take the towels, like, to shake them out and, like, try to wash them. She just dumped a cup full of detergent, washed them, proceeded to put them in the dryer and use them the next day. (gasps) You could never go in that house again. I can't even imagine all the bacteria and all. Oh, God. I got to tell you, for someone who's a a little bit of a germaphobe, I don't even. what, What town is she in? I can't even go into that town. She lives um, in Charlotte off of Harris Boulevard. <laughs> I-, I can never go to that street ever again. <laughs> I'm going to have to drive out of park. my way all the way around just to avoid that street. Yeah, I could have maybe let it slide if she just took the towels and threw them away. But she yes. took them and tried to wash them, but they sat sour in pissy water. So now not only did she keep using those towels, but her washer, because the towels sat in there so long with the urine and feces in them, <sighs> her her washing machine smells like that now, and it's like a black ring of I don't know what at the top of the washing machine. Oh, yeah, right. so who's not, in the you're d- not allowed back there again. So who's in the line for the drive through right now, kids? <laughs> 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 Enjoy your chicken nuggets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Oops, sorry. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Hi, how are now, you, Cooper? I'm good, Sarah. Now, who do you know that has a really messy, gross place? Well... This has got to top anything I've ever seen, but oh, my no. mother's <laughs> my mother's best friend. Put your friend, forks down. Everybody, put your fork down. <laughs> Step that? away from the nuggets. Step away from the nuggets. Put your right. put your food down. Right. Um, basically, my mom's best friend that she's had since I was, you know, a newborn, and I'm 27 years old. So, mm-hmm. um, she her house. It started out as that she would like collect um, like advertisement things and things like that, and she started to hoard those things away and pack rat Mm -hmm. and um it got to the point to where and and she'd always have like um several dogs in the house strictly and she wouldn't clean up after them or anything like that it got to the point to where her house ended up being um just a pathway to like to the bathroom Uh. to um her bed and that was pretty much it (gasps) um just because there was so much stuff in her house. And also, there was one time that I can recall that my mother actually was changing one of my little sisters in the floor, and, and the lady was like, well, give me the diaper, I'll take care of it. And she handed my, uh, her friend the dirty diaper, and she stuck it up on the cutting board. No! In the kitchen, on the cutting board, and <gasps> left it there. And I was like, oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> now, now, is there, when you walk into her house, is there any, um, does she apologize? Does she, does she have any awareness of how she lives? Well, what it is is that none of us have even been in her house probably in at least eight to ten years because it's only gotten worse, and she's so ashamed she won't let any – she won't even, like – if you come to the door, she'll peek her face out, and she won't even let you in her house. It's so bad. And 
I've heard that the city has been called and she's almost had her house, what is it, like condemned or whatever? Yeah. Because it's so bad. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a health hazard for her. And their their plumbing doesn't even work. She has to go next door to her mother in law's house to even shower or anything. Oh no! It's that bad. Wow, that's. I mean, I gotta tell you, that's kind of sad that she's let it get to that point. I know, right? But but at least she has an awareness. See, that's the thing. If you if you're aware of it, you should do something about it. Find out why you're hoarding. Find out why you have those issues. Don't just right. accept it and go. Well, that's who I, you know. Sorry about it, everybody. And the thing is, is that she'd sell some of that advertisement. She'd have enough money to get a maid or something. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, man, Sarah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Now, didn't you go a few weeks without having a toilet? Well, that's because our toilet was busted, and Mm. we had no toilet. It's like a month, wasn't it, Chad? Yeah, it was like a month. (laughs) But if you had a a TV show at your house, wouldn't you keep your house clean? Yes. Little people, big world. Yeah. They have the messiest house ever, even before they were doing the remodeling that they're doing now. Just piles and piles of crap really? everywhere. It's like, use some of the TV show money to, to have somebody come over and clean up once in a while. And, and the fact that a producer hasn't said to them, look, guys, this is gross. Can we clean oh, it up for no, television? That, that's, that's bang right there when they haven't cleaned up a house. I that's guess just so. good TV. Yeah, I guess it's better television that way because here we are talking about it. Mm-hmm. But how can they live like that? Because it's, it's one thing if, if adults choose to live like that, but when you have kids.